In the last episode I tore down a CO2 laser marking head. In this episode let's see if we can actually engrave some stuff with it. At the end of the last episode I'd mentioned that the Galvo head itself utilised the XY2100 protocol and there's plenty of wiring diagrams for this available online. It's, it's fairly easy, you know, once you've got the wiring diagram to actually connect the thing up to a, a computer of some description. So here's the wiring diagram for the uh, pin connector here and we can see that we've got the differential drive signal. So we've got clock plus and minus sync channel 1, channel 2 which is X and Y and then we've got a plus minus 15 volts an hour ground. I'd mentioned jokingly at the end of the last video that the amount of information relating to the XY2100 protocol would actually fit on the head of a match. And here is the document for it. So here's the title, XY2100 Laser Scanner Protocol Format Specification. We can already see this is just a three page document. And if we scroll down, um, everything looks good on page two. Um, there, there's all the, the data for the XY2100 protocol. Page three is an index for a three page document. Like, no kidding, this is absolutely crazy. Um, so back to page two, page two has the data itself. Uh, we've got a little timing diagram here with our clock signal, the sync signal, and then the data frame that we send. Um, this could be the X, Y, or Z data. Um, it talks a little, about, a little bit about how the data frame is arranged, but that's literally all that they've written on it. So fortunately, there's a GitHub repo available that can convert G-code into XY2100 protocol. This marvelous piece of software was written by Daniel Olson and uploaded to GitHub some time ago. Um, it is an absolute gem of a program. I've been writing programs for many, many years now, and every now and again, you'll just come out with a program that's beautiful. And this is one of those things. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic uh, piece of code, it has to be said. Uh, this makes extensive use of the Teensy 4.0 timer libraries and if you were to print those things out on paper it would probably make a, a stack of paper about this thick right and um, there's a, an awful lot of work gone into this and um, so kudos to Daniel for coming out with this piece of software anyway let's take a look at it so it says it's called Opal and it's in the open it's part of the open Galvo project it says it's a minimalistic firmware for processing g-code commands to xy2100 protocols so that we can drive things like Galvo's with there's a couple of links that um, I'll, I'll link in down below. There's a link to a Reddit thread uh, where people have showcased the work that they've done with this. And there's a couple of videos on YouTube as well showing the engraving of the Open Galvo logo. Uh, we'll just scooch down to the bottom here. Daniel says this is a pre-alpha version, right? Mostly because you're using this to um, drive big scary lasers with that could actually cause damage, right? So it says your Teensy might break, uh, you know, disclaimer, Teensy might break, your Galvo might be destroyed, you know, maybe you'll move a mirror beyond where you should be moving mirrors to, um, the laser might be destroyed, um, things might catch fire, you might go blind, right? So the usual safety precautions apply if you're going to be driving any kind of uh, high power laser equipment with software. That said, this is a fantastic piece of software. You can simply download this thing and fire it up in the Arduino IDE with the Teensy plugin and um, you know, essentially flash the firmware, you know, compile and flash the firmware to your Teensy 4.0 and away you go. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Down at the bottom it says the firmware has features to control XY2100 Galvos, um, as we might uh, expect. So the Sino Galvo series, these are the, the Chinese Galvos that are available on the likes of AliExpress for about three or four hundred bucks, I think. Um, a Sinran 48 series laser, um, which lo and behold, I actually have in my head here. So the software actually controls that. Um, there's also a couple of uh, optional pins to uh, control solid state relays for things like turn, you know, turning the Galvo on and off through software and turning the laser on and off through software. So you could have like a solid state relay in there to shut the thing down. It should be noted that this piece of software is minimalistic in terms of it doesn't support uh, complex move commands. So it only supports G0 and G1, which are linear G-code move commands, uh, but that's, that's perfectly fine. I mean, you can make curves out of series of very, very small lines, um, so everything's fine. It supports the S command for power, which will give you the PWM signal out. Um, it's got some additional commands as well. M17 and M18 will control the Galvo um, solid state relay and M80 and M81 will control the laser solid state relay. The only thing that was really missing in this repo was a schematic and a PCB layout. Um, if you scooch up to the top here, it says, you know, we've got this differential line driver that's wired to pins 22, 19, 17 and 14 on the Teensy 4.0 uh, go away and wire them up and away you go. Um, Really fortunately, I've got the great honor of, be, of actually being able to contribute to this project, and so I have. So I've designed a circuit schematic for this and a PCB, so let's go and look at those. 
So here's the schematic that I've designed and there's really not much to it. I've designed it based off of the stuff on Daniel's GitHub there. We've got the Teensy 4.0, we've got our differential uh, line driver, got a couple of pin headers on the board there and some decoupling caps. Um, I've added in a buffer here to buffer the uh, PWM and solid state relay signals there, 3.3 volt signals out of the Teensy and this will buffer them and step them up to 5 volts which is kind of a little bit more handy for bits and pieces of equipment that you might want to connect to this. We've got the all important LEDs because everybody loves LEDs but in all seriousness it's kind of nice to have some lights to be able to debug this thing and see what's going on. So here's the PCB layout for this project. Personally, I think it's worked out really quite well and it's pretty neat. Everything's all nice and labeled, uh, but I'm sure everybody will have some comments about this. So feel free to rip it to shreds down below. Um, let's have a look at the 3D view because everybody likes to see 3D models of things. And there's the 3D view of the circuit board. Very, very nice. If we flip it on the back there, we can see I've got my own logo on there and I've got Daniel's Open Galvo logo. Um, I, I personally, like I say, I think it's worked out really quite well. The PCB Gerber files are also available on my own GitHub and I will link these things in down below as well. This episode is sponsored by GLC PCB, who is the manufacturer that produced the printed circuit boards for this project. GLC PCB can manufacture high quality PCBs up to six layers starting at just $2 for one to four layer PCBs with fast turnaround and online real time order tracking. GLC PCB don't just produce PCBs, they also offer an SMD assembly service if you would like to have your circuits fully manufactured. They also offer a 3D printing service for if you don't happen to have a 3D printer at home. Take a look at the website that I'll link in down below. So here's my finished and populated PCB. I've got the Teensy mounted on there, I've got the line driver and I have the buffer for the PWM and SSR signals. I've got my little LEDs mounted on the top there. Excellent. It's turned out really, really very nicely. So I have the PCB powered on and connected up to the laser head. On the left hand side we've got a ribbon cable here that goes off to the Galvo scanner itself. The two wires coming off of here go to the Synrad PWM pulse in and the Teensy will be currently feeding it a 5 kHz tickle pulse. Above that we've got two LEDs lit, we've got the 5 volt line which should always be lit and the laser on LED. The laser on LED actually comes on after a 5 second delay when you first power this thing up. Above that is the PWM LED which is rather dimly lit, I'm not sure whether you'll see that on camera but it is feeding the Synrad laser its 5 kHz tickle pulse. So I have the marking head largely reassembled here. I've mounted on the carbon dioxide laser, I've mounted on the collimating lens and the Galvo assembly on the end. Um, I've built a plus minus 15 volt power supply to drive the Galvo scan head and I've got attached to it here my Teensy XY2100 controller PCB. Let's zoom in on the business end and see if we can do some engraving with this thing. So this is the business end, I've got the Galvo mounted some 10 centimeters or so above the work surface. The work surface itself I've covered with metal, just in case the beam wanders off, I don't want it burning holes in my workbench. The work area itself comprises of a jeweler's dish, this is quite a refractory material, you use it for melting gold and silver in so it's unlikely to burn or catch fire. I've got the all important laser safety goggles so let's put them on and see if we can engrave something with this thing. So I have a piece of wood mounted under the Galvo, let's send this thing some G-code. This is amazing. This is really, really cool. Looks almost like magic this. Excellent. I've got my logo loaded up here in GIMP and I can export this as a PNG and then load this into FNGrave. FNGrave is part of Linux CNC and it will take an image and it will trace all of the edges uh, for you. It actually just does it automatically, you don't have to do anything, you just load in the image and it will do its best guess um, as to what this should look like as a vector. Um, it should be noted that Opal doesn't actually support uh, complicated moves, it only supports linear moves, so G0 and G1 codes. Um, fortunately when FNGrave does this job all of the curves on here aren't really curves at all they're just a series of straight lines um, so it's, it's perfect for this application. Uh, there's a couple of additional things you can do in here you can set the header so in this case I'm setting the power level to 180 um, for the laser. Once you've, uh, once you've finished with this you can export it as G-code um, so here's the resulting G-code and like I say it's all linear moves in here um, there's my little header with my power setting up the top but yeah that's pretty much it. Because um, I'm working on Linux, I've written a small script 
uh, a little Python script that will then read in this file and go and send it out to the Teensy. Um, on my system, it enumerates as dev tty acm0. On your system, it might uh, it might enumerate as something else, but this just basically reads it in line by line and spits it out over serial and we're done. And there's a couple of little notes in the bottom here. I'll upload this to GitHub as well. There's a couple of little notes at the bottom here. Only supports linear moves. Um, there's a couple of additional codes that you can use as well. Um, you know, you can set these things in the headers or whatever. M17 and 18 will turn the Galvo on and off and M80 and 81 will turn the uh, solid state relay pin for the laser on and off. Um, S sets PWM and there's a little example down at the bottom. This software is doing an excellent job, it has to be said. Look at it. This is way cool. Let's try another. Awesome. Look at that. Since this is a carbon dioxide laser, we can try and engrave some perspex. So I'm gonna send an image to it just now. And this I've actually done flipped. So this is a reverse image. So that hopefully when we flip the piece over, it'll be a lot uh, clearer on the reverse side. And that seems to have worked quite well. I'm gonna give it another pass with the laser just to make sure that the engraving is good and deep. I've only got this thing running on low power. But it looks like it's done a decent job. We can already see the, uh, the image sort of being projected onto the um, dish there. Excellent. I think if we were to back illuminate that, that'd work out really quite well. We'll just have a quick go at engraving some glass here. That seems to be doing something. Yep. It's really interesting to watch this. Like this character sometimes appear long after the laser beams passed. Excellent. Seems to have missed an S off there. Oh, there goes the S. How fascinating. That's really bizarre. It's like it heats up the surface of the glass and then it sort of cracks after the fact. It's actually still sort of cracking along the, the lines there. Cool. So I'm gonna try something super ambitious here and see if we can break the firmware on this thing. So let's send it a real complex image. See if you can guess what this is. It's doing a good job so far. Excellent. This is superb. So far, so good. Nothing's on fire. This is superb. It's really coping well with the small details as well. This is the most amazing thing I've seen all week. Here comes the Philippines and Australia. Awesome, absolutely fantastic. What a job. Open Galvos just caught with this just fine. The Galvos caught with this just fine. I mean, remember that this marking head was originally used to mark soda bottles. What a fantastic job. The combination of Open Galvo and this old marking head has actually worked out spectacularly well. Uh, way beyond my wildest anticipations, it has to be said. It's proved itself very, very capable of engraving on things like wood and cardboard, especially the, the level of detail it produces is just astonishing. Even on Perspex, it's worked out really very well indeed. And like I say, I think if I side illuminate this thing, it'll look really quite well. Uh, glass hasn't worked out too well. I mean, it has engraved something. If I hold it close enough to the wood there to cast a shadow, we can see that the engraving has actually taken place, but obviously I need to spend a little bit of time sort of fine tuning this thing in terms of power and speed, but absolutely excellent. This has worked out really, really well indeed. Thanks for watching this episode of Leslie's Lab. If you wanna see more content like this, don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below, and I'll see you guys next time.